As you say, all of this goes back to your friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. Mm. How did you first become friends? How did you meet? Well, I met through his girlfriend um, back in 1999, who, um, and I'd known her since uh, she was at university in the UK. Um, and it would be, to some extent, a stretch to say that, that um, uh, as it were, we were close friends. I mean, we were friends because of other people. Um, and I had a lot of opportunity to um, uh, go to the United States, um, but I didn't have much time with him. I suppose I saw him once or twice a year, perhaps maybe maximum of three times a year. And um, quite often, if I was in the United States and doing things, it, and if he wasn't there, he would say, well, why don't you come and use my houses? So I said, that's very kind. Thank you very much indeed. Um, but it would be, it would be um, a, a, a considerable stretch to say that he was a very, very close friend. But he had the most extraordinary um, ability to bring um, uh, extraordinary people together. Uh, and that's the bit that I remember, is going to the dinner parties where you would meet academics, politicians, people from the United Nations. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a cosmopolitan group of what I would describe as, as U.S. Um, eminence. All right, so who wants to go first? Greg? Yeah, so I'll jump on two things, and then it may bleed into three. Number one, you, it would be a stretch to characterize us as close friends. Evolves to it would be a considerable stretch to characterize us as very, very close friends. Hmm, that's an interesting distancing from the situation, number one. Here's one of those, and Chase, we'll both be on this one from different angles. This is one of those points where he's nodding very rapidly, yes about being a friend, and then suddenly preparing because he knows what's coming, pushing his tongue out of his mouth. And this is not a grooming move as much, you know, cleaning your mouth is almost distasteful, pushing his tongue out. Of course, his routine is a little bit of that, but watching from here, that first start, and you'll see as he progresses through this, fight or flight's going to start hitting him, and you'll get mucosal fatigue and all that, and we'll talk about it as it shows up. But those two things are my first two. Chase, what do you got? There's a lot here. So just focus on a couple of things. We have this lip compression, the moment that the person's name is mentioned. We see the lips squeezed together, which typically means withheld opinions or something's kind of being withheld. And we're also getting a little bit of a baseline here because we're starting out the video and you know, Greg talks a lot about baseline. So we're looking, he's accessing a genuine memory and he looks over to his left. So we're kind of just starting to get this little baseline behavior. And when he says United States, he's using this hand. He's gesturing that direction when he's going to America. So these are important little things to pay attention to for the rest of the interview. And one thing you'll notice when you have an HD video, that's really, really cool. The artery underneath the knee causes the foot to bounce with the heartbeat. So what we'll do, I'll throw it in the comments here. I'll throw his heartbeat throughout the entire interview, which I've spent time calculating <laughs> in the comments of the video. Yeah, Chase, it's a beautiful thing because I've been watching it the entire video myself, watching right. his pulse rate. It's a beautiful thing. That's I, I what I was, was right. That's what I was waiting to the end. I was going to goose it with that. But I wonder <laughs> which handler let him sit that way in full camera view. Like, Mark, you're – your people are letting Yeah, you. well, let me tell, let me tell you about this. Um, his handlers have abandoned him at this point. And here's how I think we can tell that. Just look at his tie. His tie is askew. A handler would have never have let that go. So let's look at the bigger context that we have here. We're in the Royal Palace. That's not his house. That's his mother's house. It's the seat of the Crown of England. It's a place of high authority where he's trying to get extreme compliance from this interviewer. And he's trying to do it by striking awe. As you walk into that room, you just need to look at the China collection at the back. You've got priceless paintings all around you. He's basically saying, you will comply because look at the authority that rests here. Um, Maitlis, uh, to counter this, has shown up in a military-style jacket, knowing, I think, so there are no accidents here. 
Right. There are conscious and unconscious choices. She's shown up in a military jacket, hoping for some compliance around that, that he'll see the braids, he'll see the military style. And although he's a vice admiral himself, there will be an element of compliance to that idea of military and uh, rank signals, essentially. Though, of course, we don't expect that he thinks she holds any rank. However, in the UK, she would be one of the top interviewers in hard news. So she's a strong contender here. So I just want to lay that out and just, you know, let you know, I think he's been abandoned at this point. He's on his own because handlers would have come in and they'd have adjusted that time. I just want to make two other points about this. Uh, Greg, the the uh, the stretch, we actually see him do a, a descriptor of that stretch. And and it, it is, he doesn't make it a huge stretch. He makes it a little bit of a stretch. But later on in the interview, we're going to see him do a stretch again, and we're going to see his hands clasped together, and he won't describe a stretch. So it's a good, a good chance for a baseline on that. And I just want to put one more thing down. He says, that's the bit that I remember, and that stress is on I. And I think at this point, to your point at the start, Scott, he's just laid down his complete strategy, which is, I remember this, and I'm not going to remember other stuff. So he's, he's, he's already gone, here's, here's my strategy. I'm going to forget stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's the way it's laid out. You can tell he's been hanging with some high end lawyers because that's the perfect setup for that whole thing. <clears throat> right out of the gate. He says, when she says, you know, how did y'all meet her? He says, I met, he doesn't say I met him. He doesn't say, say we met. <clears throat> he says, I met. And that distances him from him from word one from the right out of the gate. I met at, and then he describes how it's done. We're, we're talking about that foot sticking out as well. And it's really important, not just for the heart, for the heartbeat, but he's using it as a barrier as well. So I'll be pointing those out as we go through, because as he gets to some points, you see it go dank as he tries to subconscious psychologically block what's coming at him. It's, it's, this is, and these angles they've done with this are perfect. And they're not just honing in on her. Like we saw in the Megan Kelly thing. It's not about Megan Kelly. And it's not about this interview. It's about the interviewee. So this is a, this is going to be a, this is going to be a great, uh, learning exercise for the person that wants to learn about uh, body language. All of this goes back to your friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. Mm. How did you first become friends? How did you meet? Well, I met through his girlfriend um, back in 1999, who, um, and I'd known her since uh, she was at university in the UK. Um, and it would be, to some extent, a stretch to say that, that um, uh, as it were, we were close friends. I mean, we were friends because of other people. Um, and I had a lot of opportunity to um, uh, go to the United States, um, but I didn't have much time with him. I suppose I saw him once or twice a year, perhaps maybe maximum of three times a year. And um, quite often, if I was in the United States and doing things, it, and if he wasn't there, he would say, well, why don't you come and use my houses. So I said, that's very kind. Thank you very much indeed. Um, but it would be, it would be um, a, a, a considerable stretch to say that he was a very, very close friend. But he had the most extraordinary um, ability to bring um, uh, extraordinary people together. Uh, and that's the bit that I remember, is going to the dinner parties where you would meet academics, politicians, people from the United Nations. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a cosmopolitan group of what I would describe as, as U.S. Um, eminence. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.